Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quartic equation. I call this a quartic equation, not a rational equation, because we don't have any variables in the denominator. And after cross multiplying, we're going to actually turn this into a full quartic. Let's go ahead and do that first. 4x squared plus 4x equals negative x to the fourth minus 7. And then we're going to add those terms on the right hand side to both sides, x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 4x plus 7 equals 0. Awesome. Even though I said this is a full quartic, that should actually that is missing x cubed. So it's actually a depressed quartic. So it's kind of uh, expressing some uh, depression anyways. So how do we solve this equation, right? I'll be presenting, I think, at least two methods maybe. And we can start with the first one. So the first one is kind of like using the quartic formula. And there's obviously more than one way to do it. But we can go ahead and do the following. We can just write this in the factored form. So since we don't have x cubed, we can go ahead and do the following. x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 4x plus 7. Let's go ahead and set it equal to x squared plus ax plus b. Again, this is one of the methods. You could also use perfect squares, like turn this into a difference of two squares, right? Like you can put the 4x plus 7 on the right hand side and then add something to both sides to make it a perfect square. And then you want both sides to be perfect squares, so on and so forth. Anyways, the other uh, factor is going to be x squared minus ax. And the idea here is to get rid of x cubed. x cubed is formed by the product of an x squared and an x term. So if ax and negative ax are opposite signs, then we'll uh, accomplish what we need. And then plus I could put a c here, but notice that uh, the constant 7 is formed by b times the constant c. So instead of writing a c there and coming up with an extra equation, we can just call that 7 over b. Makes sense? This way we're limiting ourselves to two variables, which is actually really good. Okay. Now let's go ahead and distribute this completely and solve for a and b. That's going to give us x to the fourth minus ax cubed. I'm not going to write those because they're going to cancel out anyways. And then we have 7 over bx squared. Then I'm done with the first term. And then minus a squared x squared plus 7a over b times x. And then plus bx squared minus abx plus 7. Great. Now, this is a lot of terms still, but uh, we can simplify this a little bit. We get x to the fourth. And then for x squared, we have three terms, these three. So we can kind of write it as b minus a squared plus 7 over b as the coefficient of x squared. And then the coefficient of x is this one and this one. So we can kind of write it as 7a over b minus ab multiply by x and finally our constant is going to be 7. Now compare this equation to this one and you're going to realize okay the coefficients are as follows. This is supposed to be a 4 and this is supposed to be a 4. Obviously constant and x to the fourth already there so we don't have to worry about it. There are two variables so we should be able to solve it. Let's go ahead and write it down as a system b minus a squared plus 7 over b equals 4 and then 7a over b minus ab and I feel like we can take out an a here and let's see if that's gonna help if you take out a b 7 over b minus b and then we have 7 over b plus b so that might be a little helpful looks like it let's go ahead and give it a try so I'm going to take out a, a a here and write this as 7 over b minus b and that's going to be the coefficient of x which is 4 right they're both 4 actually in this case so they're kind of equal. Great. So here's what we can do. Uh, we can go ahead and isolate one of these. Let's see which one is going to be a little easier. Looks like uh, isolating A would be easier in this case because it's linear here. Let's make a common denominator. This is 7 minus B squared over B equals 4. And then I can write the A as 4B divided by 7 minus B squared. Of course, in some cases, you may not get a cubic equation from here uh, and things can get complicated. But let's go ahead and plug it in to the first one. 
and I believe it's gonna give us a cubic, but I could be wrong. So replacing uh, b plus seven over b minus a squared with this. Yeah, looks like I'm gonna get a quartic from here equals four. And now I only have a single variable, but the problem is this is gonna give us b to the fourth and we're gonna get a b squared, so it's going to be quartic again. Something might cancel out, I don't know, or we're gonna end up getting the exact same equation, but you know, this is one way to try to factor it. Now here's the thing though, we're not necessarily looking for integer values, therefore uh, we can't just kind of guess and check here. Otherwise, uh, if a and b were integers, then we could actually kind of guess and check. That would be fairly easy. We don't even know if they're rational, right? Obviously, that's going to be another issue. So let's go ahead and leave this un incomplete. And I'm pretty sure there is a better way to do it, which is the other method. But I'm going to proceed with the second one. And the second one kind of involves something special, of course, right? I saved it for second method. So now we have the following equation. I want to write it as a square minus another square, a perfect square. And the way to do that is as follows. I'm actually going to consider the following. I'm going to write x squared plus a squared and then minus. So from here, I'm going to be getting an 2ax squared, right? And obviously I want that to Wait a minute, I don't want that to cancel out, so I'm probably going to do it as follows then. I'm going to write it as b and then x minus c squared, and I want this to be 0. Great. So now we have three variables, uh, but that shouldn't discourage you. Uh, hopefully we're going to get something nice from here, because in this case I'm looking for integers. Okay, makes sense? a, b, c, I want them to be integers. Otherwise that's going to be too hard, at least with this method. So we get x to the fourth plus 2ax squared plus a squared and then minus bx squared 2cx. So it's going to be plus 2bcx. And then we're going to get a plus c squared minus bc squared equals zero. And here, if you compare this to our expression, this is going to be 2a minus b times x squared. And then we have 2bcx, which is good. And then I'm taking care of this, taking care of that. And then we have plus a squared minus bc squared equals zero. Awesome. Now, this is supposed to be a four and this is supposed to be a four. What does that mean? And a, I expect a, b, c to be integers, by the way. 2a minus b is equal to four and b, c is equal to two. So how do you solve such a, a system of equations? And of course, we do know that this is gonna equal seven, right? a squared minus b, c squared, is equal to seven. We could probably do some substitution and then make this a little simpler. I could probably uh, isolate B from the first equation and plug it in. Uh, if I do isolate B, it's gonna give me two A minus four. If I plug it in here, C times two A minus four is equal to two. And in the second, I mean in the third equation, if I plug that in one more time, that's two A minus four equals seven. And then we have c times 2a minus 4 equals 2. Awesome. So c times 2a minus 4 is 2, by the way. So I can kind of write this as a squared minus c times 2a minus 4 times c equals 7. Since this is a 2, I get a squared minus 2c equals 7. I don't know if that's an improvement or I'm going backwards, but we'll see how this goes. So right now I have a squared minus 2c equals 7. And then from here... I can kind of isolate C, which is nice. C can be written as two over two A minus four or one over A minus two. Let's go ahead and plug it in here. A squared minus two times that equals seven. Okay, at least this looks better than the quartic. Now we're gonna multiply everything by A minus two, A cubed minus two A squared minus two equals seven A minus 14. And then A cubed minus two A squared minus seven A plus 12 equals zero. Awesome. Now let's go back to our equation. We wrote it as follows. So once we find a, b, c, we're going to have our equation in factored form, but we have to find a from here. So here's how you can proceed. You can use the rational root theorem because I expect it to be an integer. So test um, like the factors of 12, 
you know, the plus minus one, the plus minus two, the plus minus three, so on and so forth. And I'm gonna start with a equals three. That gives me 27 minus two times nine, which is 18, minus uh, seven times three, which is 21, plus 12. This is gonna be 39, and this is gonna be 39, and that's gonna be zero. Okay, great, oh, obviously I knew a equals three. So, but you can try and you'll get that. So a equals three gives us a lot of good information because from here, nine minus two, c equals seven, because a is three, c becomes one. And if c is equal to one, then I think uh, if a is equal to three, then we get b equals two, awesome. So these are all the solutions a is equal to 3, b is equal to 2, and c is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and rewrite the expression one more time, and then we will plug it in. x squared plus a squared minus b times x plus c squared equals 0, right? That was my assumption, correct? Oh, actually, that, that was x minus c. Obviously, I wanted that to cancel out or to reduce some, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's just going to be the opposite if we go by x plus c. But in this case, it's going to be x squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times x minus 1 squared equals 0. Awesome. Now from here we get the following. This is difference of two squares. So we can kind of factor it as x squared plus 3. By the way, this is square root of 2 squared. Consider that. Plus square root of 2 times x minus 1. And then multiply that by x squared plus 3 minus square root of 2 times x minus 1 equals 0. From here we get x squared plus square root of 2x plus three minus square root of two, that's gonna be one of the factors. The other factor is gonna be x squared minus square root of two x, plus three plus root uh, two, and that's gonna be the answer, pretty much. But from here, you can use the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus four ac, kind of like a very radical expression. And then the other two solutions, since this is a quartic, is gonna be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Again, that's going to be 4 times 3 plus root 2. And that's going to be the other radical. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.